Hey guys, what's going on? It's Don here from Nova Spirit Tech, and today we're going to be doing a compare and contrast between the two boards that are most competitive to each other, which is the Rock Pro 64 and the Nano PC T4. So let's get started. So before we begin, I gotta say that this is not a full in-depth review on each one of these boards. It's just a compare and contrast between the two. I will be releasing videos in the future for each individual one, a full comprehensive review on each board. So stay tuned for that. So why I say these two are the most competitive to each other, it's because of the spec and the pricing between the two. So let's start with the pricing itself. Uh, to the left, you have the Rock Pro 64, which is $79.99. And then the right, you have the Nano PC T4, which is $129.99. Now you might be saying, hey, that's, that's not even close. Hear me out. So for the Nano PC T4, you get basically four gigs of RAM, the Rock chip 3399, uh, 16 gigabytes of eMMC built in, Wi-Fi and Bluetooth, okay? So also includes the power brick, and also a heat sink. So you're, you're done. You basically 129 and you get everything here and it's up and running as soon as you get it, okay? To start off, you only get this board for $79.99. You need also a power brick. So to get the power brick, that's gonna cost you about, no, $12.99 for the power brick itself, right? It also doesn't include the eMMC, which is another $15.99. And then to write on it, you also need one of this little contraption, which is a USB to eMMC writer, which costs like $4.99. On top of that, you also need a heat sink, which you also need to buy, which is $3.29. And this is the only optional piece you could say, which is the fan. You need it, you don't, it's up to you if you want to run it or not. It does get a little bit warm, but this is another $2 and change. All this added up, you're around two. $123 and that still doesn't even include Wi-Fi, which is another $15.99, which brings you actually over the price of the Nano PC T4 just to get the similar specs. They're both running four gigs of RAM. So yeah, that's, that's how you look at it. I do like the point that they do break off everything. So if you have other components that you don't want to purchase, like you want to use SD card instead, you kind of could save yourself like 20 bucks right there. And if you got your own power brick, you don't need to use theirs. You could kind of save a couple of bucks there. You know, they, they break it up for you so you could kind of save money if you really needed to. But to get it to run exactly the same, it's about the same price point. Another thing why I say they're both the same, they're both using the Rockchip 3399, which is the Rockchip's flagship CPU at the moment. It's, it's a hexa-core big little system where you have two cores which are faster than the four cores which are slower. The top two cores, which is the A72, runs at two gigahertz, while the A A53 runs at 1.5 gigahertz, the quad core. They're both running at four gigs of RAM, and this device itself, both have PCIe 4 lanes that you could attach stuff to. Now this guy, the Pine Pro 64, Rock Pro 64, I'm just gonna call it Pine. Or If you get confused, I'm sorry, but yeah. The Rock Pro 64 has this actual full-size PCIe 4 that you could actually stick a, like a Wi-Fi card or something into it. While on the underside of this guy, the Nano PC, also have a M2 M key, which you could actually purchase something like this to have the same interface as that guy. So you could just stick that on and you could also stick a Wi-Fi card in. So they made this a little bit more convenient if you're gonna run an M.2. And they also have a crazy small form factor for this type of CPU. This is actually the smallest one you could find on the market that's running the Rockchip 3399. Now on top of this, if we're gonna talk about interfacing. This board also, I think is the only one that has the Pi 2 interface uh, with the 40 pin connector on the side over here. The Rock Pro 64, you have the fan controller, well the fan lead out, then you have the SPDIF and um, uh, what do you call real time clock which is a battery that you can put into this. On the Nano you actually have the 3 pin fan so it actually has like a speed controller and you have the real time clock here. On this guy, you have the reset and the power button and also the recovery button up on top. The recovery button is important because if you run anything Android or Linux, you're gonna to need to load in the bootloader with this. On the Nano, you have the power button, reset, then the recovery button on this side. They both have USB 2.0 ports, two of them, and a USB 3.0, one USB 3.0, and then a USB-C and also a display port from the USB-C. Now, you might be saying this guy has four. No, it doesn't. It's actually, if you take a look at the connector, this guy actually have a USB-C right here. It's hitting 
it's so it's a fake USB 3 but and it fits it looks pretty good like this then you have the 3.5 millimeter um, audio jack and on the Nano you actually have a mic input so I, I really like how small this guy is and so much versatile that I could do like I could literally just throw this into a room and record a conversation that's it's like a full hacker board you could say then you have the gigabit LAN and also a 5.5 millimeter jack for power and then the HDMI they also have a lot of interfaces here with this supports the two camera modules and then the displays are over here on the bottom for this guy you have two camera modules I don't remember which one I think these are the two camera modules you have the CIF over here then you have a touch screen yeah then you have the two screen ports over here all right so the NanoPi has the four pin uh, serial port over here and these are power outputs I believe it's 1.8 volts 3.3 volts and it's in this section itself well this guy I believe this is the serial port it doesn't really say on the documentation but I believe this is the serial port now on the underside of this guy you have the SD card slot over here while on the Nano it's on top but on the underside of the Nano that's where you have that uh, M2 M key on the bottom and an infrared port. All right, now that we're done with all the hardware into this guy, we should really talk about software. As far as I know, um, Pine64 really has an issue with development. Um, I say that personally because uh, I've dealt with it on their Rock64 board, uh, communication issues, and also their images are not always up to date. But they do have a really good community support where a lot of people fixes the problems, they just don't bake it into their original image itself. But yeah. This guy took me about five weeks to get. You, you've probably seen my previous video on the Rock 64 chip. Their shipping and customer support, horrendous. It took me five weeks just to get this guy. While when I ordered this NanoPi, I got this in about four days. This guy has really good developer support, but the community support is a little bit lacking. And I really wish that people would start focusing on the NanoPies, all the friendly arms, because their boards are really good. They just need a little bit more community support, more community development, and then they can make this board really great. The form factor is similar to the predecessor, which is uh, this guy right here, the T3. I didn't do a review on this actual guy, but I did do a review on their smaller brother, which has the same CPU. Uh, this is the Fire 3. So if you want to see a review on that, I'll leave a link in the description and also on the link. And also, everything that I'm talking about will be in the description. I, I should have mentioned that in the beginning. But as far as software-wise, I'm going to be using their default Lubuntu installation on each one. And I'm just going to do a Blowfish uh, speed test and some other speed test and compare these two to see which one is faster. All right, so I made the images nearly identical they're both running ubuntu 18.04 running lxde um and i'm running hard info which is like a benchmarking tool so right now i have cpu blowfish and you could see the top which is this one is the nano pi and then the bottom is the rock pro 64. so the scores on this one is 5.7 while this one is 5.67 the lower is better so the rock pro is you know 0 0.03 lower and then if you follow along i have like the crypto hash um you could see if i go over to um i change both of those and again this one the higher the better this one is 233 which is the rock pro and then the nano pc is 206 and now the cpus are identical it's just the operating system is a little bit different depending on who built it and stuff but so this is the nix cpu test and you can see again uh the top one nano po, uh, pc is 1.86 and the rock pro is 1.84 so again they're nearly identical but apparently the build on the rock pro uh, 64 is slightly faster as far as running the same exact hash and these are both exact same versions 0 0.6 0 0.6 of hard info so there we go as far as the tests for both the nano pc and the rock pro 64 uh, gpu rendering doesn't really result in a good because it, it can't get the open gl I, I think i have to install it into an operating system in order to get that going so that might come on a later test but yeah so far um the rock pro 64 seems to be a hair faster probably has a better build or using a better compilation but uh, yeah 
All right, so out of these two boards, I really enjoy the smaller form factor of the Nano PCT4 and also the inclusion of a lot more stuff like the mic port and the controllable fan. Yeah, I really enjoy the Nano PC over the Rock Pro 64. But I would like to hear your thoughts about that, on what you guys think on these two boards. And if there's any other Rock 3399 boards that you want me to take a look at, I could also do that as well. So guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you guys have any questions about this, hit up in the comments below. If you guys are new to this channel, consider subscribing and also hitting that bell notification icon so you know when the next video is going to be out. And as I say in my nerd cave, hack till it hurts. So if you guys didn't know that it's sweltering down here, I recorded my basement. I have to turn off the AC. I have to turn off everything just so I keep the noise down to a minimal. You see that? The temperature is 86 degrees down here. I am sweating. So most of the time when I do like temperature testing and stuff like that, you might be thinking, why is it so hot? The ambient temperature in the basement when I'm recording is about 86 degrees. So there you go. That's why I'm sweating.